A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. From the city of Lagos right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo. All the greetings to you wherever you are joining us in the world in London. I'm Austin Okonakwan. You mean big things happening in the English Premier League and, of course, the Europa League. Uh, West Ham, the daring, the untried. We'll see. We'll monitor that one. I'll let our viewers know what's going on. All right. Tonight on the show, uh, let me attempt a quick rundown of what to expect. But a big part of the first segment of the show will be dedicated to what they call Nigeria's most important league, and that's the Nigerian National League. And so we'll be discussing with um, uh, a stakeholder uh, in that division, and of course we'll you know, talk about the important issues in the NNL. We will also take a look, as Austin has said, what's going on in the Europa League. We'll also talk about the game currently going on as we speak in the English Premier League. Manchester United and Chelsea will get us talking. We'll talk about the women uh, as we prepare for the draws for uh, the Women's Nations Cup. We'll take some post-game reactions from yesterday's game in the UEFA Champions League and all the information coming out. We hear Jurgen Klopp has signed a new contract. We'll talk about that. Rafa Nadal also in the news. We'll talk about him. And, of course, we'll talk about plans by Barcelona to renovate their stadium. Uh, we'll talk about all of that as we go on. That's the outlook of uh, the show today. And of course, we will not also forget to talk about Chelsea. Chelsea on the field, Chelsea in the boardroom. Those who want to buy Chelsea, what are they being told to do? We'll also talk about all of that as we move on on the show tonight. Uh, Austin, let me quickly introduce our partner in yeah. the Lagos studio. Uh, of course, uh, he is no other than Bolu Omadi, Bolu Omadi joins us this lovely Thursday evening. Bolu, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Yeah, good to be again on this lovely Thursday edition. Um, for those who don't like the other or lesser European competition, I think it's getting more interesting now, and everyone's attention is there. Seeing Roma in the third tier, if for nothing, if for say Mario, you definitely want to work with the Nigeria interest of lesser cities. And in the other game as well, sorry, Desas has scored for final. I thought they can lose, but I shall want Desas to score, and has gotten on discussion. Andy, well, should I say the whoopee boys or the boys that have been suffering recently? Chelsea United, after going one hour without a goal, both of them have scored 1 1 2. Let's see the outcome of the game after 90 minutes. All right, we'll see that. Okay, so uh, Austin, um, do us the honors. It's right, happening right there in your backyard. A, a quick situation report Chelsea and Manchester United. Mm, just when I, I was doing the, the opening remarks, I mean, it was Manchester United 0, Chelsea 1. But now it's 1-1, one, one, as Bolu mentioned. And who else? Who, who, who scores for Manchester United if it's not Cristiano Ronaldo? Pops up, you know, to put the Red Devils back into the game. So it's 1-1 one, one, and it's game one. Manchester United, uh, for obvious reasons, must win this one. They are pushing hard to see if they can win it because... If they don't, it's going to, you know, do terrible things to them on the league table. So Chelsea, on their own part, also needs this for some level of consolidation. So um, big game before us in the English Premier League. I'll continue to monitor it. Continental Europe, Bolu has talked about it already, but let's just see what is happening. Uh, these days, you have to pay attention to Entra and Frankfurt. Uh, remember, in my younger days, I followed that club because JJ Okocha played uh, for that club. Also, I had Tony Yeboah, uh, the Ghanaian legend, at some point, and uh, there was some reasons why I followed. But now, they got my attention when they knocked out Barcelona, so we need to pay some attention. <laughs> Quick situation report from that. Let's see uh, what is happening as they play in uh, the semi-final. West Ham as well, uh, all of these teams in action. I'm very sure you're going to have it on your screen any moment from now. West Ham up against Entrang Frankfurt. With all the injury worries, Bolu, it's 1-1. One, one. And uh, RB Leipzig and Rangers, is goalless. Uh, I mean, for sentimental reasons, you know why I would always <laughs> want Rangers to win. Three Super Eagles players involved in that one. But West Ham, West Ham under David Moyes. I mean, what else can we say? And 
it still looks like a decent team that he put out today, in spite of the injuries people have talked a lot about. I think uh, no matter what happens to West Ham, uh, we can say they've achieved be way beyond their expectation. The fact that they got to Europe, that alone is a big win. The fact that they moved from the group stage, that's a big win. Then getting to the semi final. And the interesting thing is they see what it takes to win. I think among all the players here, based on consistency, they look like the favourites. And before now, nobody would predict West Ham United going this far. They went down earlier in the game and they pulled one back before the break. It shows the team that are fighting hard. The one interesting thing is no away goes rule in the Champions League. So whatever happens, if this game ends in a draw, it means they are going away for a clean slate, try and pick up a win or maybe a draw to force extra time. So good one for West Ham United. Um, I, I think it just says a lot about David Moyes. We also what he did with Everton. Taking at the point he finished fifth, at the point he finished fourth. Now we move to United. I, many United fans are now stylishly saying maybe they didn't give him enough time to have achieved. Maybe if he had stayed a few years like they did for Mourinho and uh, Ole, maybe he could have done more. We are seeing what he's doing with West Ham now, and uh, everybody now is looking at it more that maybe. Maybe it wasn't that bad after all. So let's see if they can uh, complete the comeback and beat um, Frankfurt. But even if they don't win, I think they've achieved a lot this season. OK, let's pause. We'll get back to all of that in a bit. Uh, I talked about it earlier. The most important league in Nigeria. That's what we call it. Nigeria National League. Tonight, we have the pleasure of having the head of media and publicity of the Nigeria National League, Amar Ignis. He joins us on the show. Amar Ignis, greetings to you. Thanks for finding our time to be with us on the show tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Yemi. Many thanks to you, Bolu. And uh, uh, greetings from Nigeria to you there, Austin, in London. Nice to be here. All right. All right, let's just get straight uh, into it. And um, let's talk about the Nigeria National League. One of the reasons I like hearing your voice is, I mean, you say it the way it is. Uh, you're one of the few guys, without trying to praise you anyway, uh, you're one of the few guys who, uh, in spite of your position, you don't shy away from saying uh, the truth. From the last time we spoke on to this moment, uh, can you beat your chest and say some of the things you promised that will be done in the NNL to sanitize? You know, the last time we talked about uh, Vans' invasion of the stadium, issues about offici officiating, and all. And you, you, you said some things that you were that you were sure the NNL was going to do. Between that time and now, do, do you think there have been changes? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, uh, we have some changes. Um, we still have a lot to deal with. Um, I will always repeat the word that the most important league is still in the building process. Um, uh, we, we have actually done a lot to see that we attend to uh, the myriads of requests, demands, needs to see that uh, the NNL, the country's most important league is, is without a doubt, gets to the level everybody desires. Uh, most times we've been hit right, left and center and people talked a lot about officiating, which has continued to be perhaps the biggest bane in the league, that we want every hand to be on the plow to see how we um, take it up. And uh, the NNL, I want to say, again, still has zero tolerance to bad officiating. Uh, some of the referees have been great interpreters of the rules. They have been uh, great arbiters. Uh, they've been physically strong, shown uh, fair judgment, allowed free flow of game. But some of them have, I must confess, have also been very poor interpreters of the rule. Uh, not being able to take split second decisions that you will applaud and say they have done so. K K Cases or examples that have come from some of the very ugly reports we have had this season were not very pleasant about it. And um, we are also on our toes. These have been able to make us sit on our toes. A lot have been said about some bad pitches, yes. In as much as we say we have some fair of bad pitches, uh, some of these clubs have failed to meet to uh, the conditions NF NNL gave them to say, okay, within this period, this and that can be put in place. And uh, perhaps taking the NNL for granted, uh, that has led to uh, the meeting we had um, uh, in Abuja to see how we look at the first stanza of the league, uh, what have been the knocks for us. You must agree with me that uh, you definitely will have knocks, but we've had great plaudits in the things we have taken, some of the decisions we have taken. We've never really had petitions or complaints from uh, reaching verbally, I mean officially to us, just like we had last year. We needed to treat the Lord. The O&D of the NFF was kept busy, and of course, um, 
with the appeals committee, you also kept very busy. That has not been the case this season so far in the, sec in the first stanza of the league. Let me leave it here as we progress. Perhaps <laughs> uh, we'll be able to shoot up other uh, requests or questions you'll be asking. Yeah, um, of course, uh, we're, we're well aware of uh, that uh, meeting that was held uh, two days ago, the NNL and uh, representative of club owners uh, held in Abuja. And I'm going to get to that. But you, you touched up on something. I'm going to ask you a question, pass the bait into Austin. I'm very sure we're going to get into uh, the communique released and some of the issues. There was a time, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Vandresa FC, uh, and I want to say this pointedly, I was saying it then, now I have the opportunity to address you and say, uh, they had complaints and they said, look, they voiced out their opinion about all of these issues and then I said, anytime we get the opportunity, we'll allow the NNL, um, of course, give their own response to whatever they're saying. And they say, look, there are chances we may not remain part of this family. What we want is fairness. So have, have you been able to assure Vanessa and any other club that has some of these complaints that there will be fairness? All right, uh, Yemi, let me answer it this way. Um, the chairman of NNL, uh, uh, distinguished Senator Obi Nogba, the chief executive officer of NNL, Barrister Saju Mohammed, and the chief operating officer, uh, Emmanuel Adesoya, um, they are willing, they are very accommodating people. They want the best for this league, including me, every stakeholder, including the president of all the clubs, 46 clubs, um, Chidi uh, Okonkwo, uh, Tony Rafa and the rest of them who make up Narcoma, the body association of uh, NNL clubs. Look at it this way. They, all the teams are the babies of NNL, Van Dresser inclusive. Last time when we spoke concerning the issues that erupted last uh, season in NNL, we told you that Van Dresser cannot leave NNL. We love them. They came with a lot of innovations, which we applauded. Media, uh, bleeds and balls. Uh, they did a lot in their March venues. It was like um, a fiesta. And we, again, we are seeing clubs again joining us this season, Sporting Lagos. We also saw Ikorodu City. They are coming with various innovations, even challenging the NNL. Like I said, it's a building process. We must give kudos and applaud these teams. It's not been easy. They want the best for the NNL. Sometimes they take the lead and we follow. And sometimes they jab us directly to say, look, NNL, this is what we think you should be doing. I know how many times uh, Godini Nahina will call me and say, Amma, this is what I feel how NNL should be. And listen, we all listen, we all have listening ears. It is not the league we want, but we have done a lot to change all of that. That's why I said, you can applaud NNL this season that there has not been any officially, official complaint or petition reaching in a mass situation that we have had to visit or keep going to the glass house to say, the o and should come and uh, uh, look at the matters, take decisions, and uh, point the way forward. Uh, we have been able to, in all fairness, manage most of the uh, challenges we have, we have had. Uh, cases of violence, beat, beating up of match referees, which, like I said earlier on, the NNL has big, huge zero tolerance. And uh, we have taken steps to see how those can be corrected. Ask Van Dresser, ask Sporting Lagos, ask Academy Warriors, ask Jigawa Golden Star. These are traditional names in Nigerian football, talking about uh, Yobe disaster. They all tell you that we have had issues um, that they can no longer say they want to leave. We are all in the ship together. We want to salvage it. We want to see how they can go. If you ask them, honestly speaking, Yemi, the league can only but be better, get better. That's where you want it. That's where I want it. That's where every Nigerian wants it. We're not perfect. We will get perfect. We are nearing the El Dorado, and soon, You'll be applauding us more than you've hitting us, just like uh, I was watching uh, uh, the Gypsy King, uh, um, of course, in the last fight. Do you know the kind of uppercut he gives? We've received so many of these uppercuts. And of course, we are trying to be a good uh, punch absorber in NNO. That's the only thing we need. Criticism will only make us better. That's the way I look at it. That's the way we see it. From Obi Nogba, from Barisa Sajo, from um, Nicholas uh, Akujobi, from every member of the NNL and watchers and followers of the most important league. Get ready for more uppercuts. Um, uh, good to have you on the show. Um, let's, talk, let's go back to the communique and um, take a look at item number five. You touched on it, but I want us to elaborate on it because it's very, very important for the development of um, the NNL. It says the meeting condemned in very strong terms the various assaults of match officials are recorded in the first stanza of the league. 
as they urge club officials to be of good conduct and properly sensitize their fans on same. I'm a, I've been covering sports in Nigeria now for almost 15 years, and I always see this on communiques. When will the league body take action? When are we going to properly sanction people so they will understand that we run a professional league? First, I'd like to commend you for that question, Austin. Uh, I have been covering sports as a colleague and a friend that you are. You are even my Ukut, <laughs> said it uh, in Aqua Ibom's language, for over 25 years. Yes, your observations are absolutely right. Um, what matters is what steps do we take when these things come? Again, I repeat vehemently that NNL has huge zero tolerance for such violence. You do not have a right to beat referee. There are no more channels and processes you can launch a complaint, not taking the law by your, by your own hands. And that's why we condemn it. Referees are human. They can, they can sue you and get redress if you hit them. What of if you even kill a referee in the process of trying to uh, agitate for unfair officiating or what you feel was a penalty that was not given you and all that? What we have done in recent times, we've been able to like we said, we need to educate the fans. More education will help us in a huge process. Because some of these fans are ignorant of what the law says or what it means to beat a referee. You don't have a right. And that is why we have continued at NNL to parley with the NRA, to parley with the Nigeria Football Federation, to also parley with the appointment committee on the need for them to begin to sift some of these referees. We can reduce them to a manageable size. And to say, okay, some of these videos, we've also allowed clubs to uh, record their match, send videotapes of how bad you think an officiating is. It is not for us to judge. We cannot punish a referee, but we can recommend hugely. And that's why we also want to get involved in everything concerning how these referees uh, fare on the pitch and how they are being appointed and what kind of quality referees we need at the NNL. So we have often, recently, we, we, we play, uh, teams are fined. Some people who commit uh, offenses are banned for... Uh, for for four, four or five matches. And of course, some of them are moved away from their stadia, from their comfort zone to another state. All these are spelled out in the uh, rules and regulation, the rule book of the Nigerian National League. I think that's the step we need to take. But you know, Austin, we live, we live in a very peculiar situation. This is a league that is still evolving. Mm. Some of these clubs are yet to know what professionalism is. NNL is not an amateur. It's not an NLO team. Even at Actually, NLO, there are the rules. Problem. We need, that's why I talked yeah. a lot about synergy between the MPFL and the NNL. If it's not, then we're not getting it right. Mm -hmm. There must be a structured base, style, to say, yeah. because if you look at it, the teams that drop from MPFL are coming to the NNL. If they have learned a lot at the MPFL, Austin, you don't, we have little work to do on them at the NNL. So if we don't give them the right structure and training, if they are not schooled, We'll be getting it wrong and the MPFL because that means MPFL will be inheriting perhaps a disaster in court. That's why this league is very important, very, very important. The most important, I keep I calling it. And the attention should be paid by it, by the NFF, more of the attention by the stakeholders. You guys in the media are doing a great. With the huge criticisms we are getting, we're only but can get better. So, Austin, I think that. We'll keep doing what we have to do, playing by the rules book. We cannot yeah. play away from the rule book because football is an association game. It is governed by rules. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. we feel bad when referees are beaten. And that's why we also feel bad when we watch sad. some of the videos and Very reports sad. from match commissioners or referees to see that some of these referees have not perfectly interpreted the rules or administered the game. Some match commissioners, too, are also corporates. And so we're looking at how we mm -hmm. all can be there to say we need constant education, seminars, you know, workshops, yeah. that the clubs have, must have the need to tell their fans, their supporters. Some of them will say, this mm -hmm. person is not registered. But when an event happens in your home ground, you are held culpable and liable. So you must continuously continue to yeah. educate your fan to know that it's I'm more. A, you must not win at home all them. the time. Yes, Austin. I'm a, I'm a, I would just say yes. that the NNL, take this back to them, please, and say that we need to do more monitoring, supervision, and be firm with our decisions. When they come down on clubs, be firm oh, and obviously. make sure that you put in the stringent measures. We are monitoring. Let's go back yeah, to obviously. another item that, you, yeah. that is mentioned on the communique before we go on a quick break, Amma. Um, it is the issue of terrible playing pitches. I know that infrastructure is a big problem in Nigeria, but 
with the NNL, some of those pitches, when you see them, you wonder, how did the NNL even approve such playing grounds in the first place? Well, uh, Austin, um, if you look at the communique, like you said, we listed about eight, eight match venues in the Southern Conference mm -hmm. and the Northern Conference. Of recent, somebody even added one more to the number of venues we've listed, because it was a critical matter for the NNL that we needed to, as a matter of urgency, it became a germane issue that we needed to sit to examine the first stance. Of course, for you to get uh, keep going, you must go back, take a peep back, and then you push forward. Um, some of them, like I said, have been issue, have disappointed. We felt that they had issues at their, with their facilities or their playing pitches they could address and attend to while, while the league starts or continues. But a lot of them have refused to do this. And that's why the, the meeting we had in Abuja has decided to take tougher measures to say, you don't play on those pitch if this and this is not there. Because see, football is beautiful on a beautiful pitch. The players will be able to express themselves. It will be uh, TV, radio, friendly, and all that. And if you don't make these things happen, then you're not happy. Let's take a look at what is happening in the championship in England, in the second division in uh, Spain, and in the Serie, Serie B in Italy, and the rest of the, uh, the second leagues. These leagues are already playing at a level of more than what you see even in the Nigeria Professional League. That is the standard NF, NNL wants to get to. Because if we don't play on good pitches, you cannot see good players uh, to get. That's why True. when Ladam Boso listed about 12 NNL players to be part of the Flying Eagles, we celebrated it. What more would you expect when they play? They have been playing or when all the teams have good pitches to play? This will attract investors. She would want to come and put you in your money. Channels uh, would want to come and cover our matches to, because they enjoy matches that are played on the good pitch. I, 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 like I said, it's still a working process. We're going to come out tougher in the second stanza, which is expected to start on the 13th of next month. This, there, there will be independent and free assessors that will be sent around to this, some of these pitches listed on the communique. And of course, even more, more we have to attend to, to ensure that we have the right playing places, the right venues for matches to be played. All right. All right. Uh, Abba, we need to go on a break right about now. When we return from that break, maybe just one more question for me. Uh, and of course, we'll call it a day. Uh, let's go on a break right about now. And of course, we'll return to continue with our discussion on the Nigeria National League. All right, welcome back. We still have uh, the head of media and publicity of the Nigeria National League, Amar Ignis, uh, with us. All right, Amar, I have an interesting question. I read through the communique, and it's good that you're always referring us back to the communique, and I only felt it was only natural for me to also refer you back <laughs> to the communique. There's a part of it that um, I like, and it, it takes me to this question, uh, and I want a response from you. What, what, what do we believe when critical stakeholders stand in front of the media and make weighty allegations, damning allegations, like telling us oh, some of these things are pre-planned, uh, we know who's going to re relegate, we know who's going to get promoted. When we begin to hear that from, from not just mere people, critical stakeholders, how, how worried should we be? And what would be the response of the NNL? It has happened in the past. Sort uh, weighty allegations. But look at it critically. We, we need to examine it. We have a lot of these club holders who, who want to win at home at all cost. What NNL has provided is a level playing ground. Let the best team win. That's why if you look at a lot of things we reviewed, you will never see teams allowing the visiting team to cover their match on tape. But that side has been reviewed, uh, uh, reviewed, and teams are free to cover, to provide evidences of attackers. Some teams still don't want some of these clubs to even come away and cover. I think it will be uh, speaking on the level of ignorance. If anybody says, this NL, NNL that I'm still with, that I'm sacrificing as a patriotic Nigeria to be with, is not fair, has picked teams that will qualify. We had, last year we played Super 8. This year we are playing Super 4. If you look at Group B2, Gateway is neck to neck with Bendel Insurance. If you go to Group, uh, group B, B1, I beg your pardon, if then Group B2 you have go round neck to neck, of course, with Warrior Wolves. Same with Academy Warriors and City. And you go to Jigawa Golden Stars where you have uh, uh, the Northern Conference. So 
What we did is to keep disturbing the NRA, keep demanding for fair officiating. We have not collected any copper. We wouldn't be doing that. Why would you do it? If anybody says he has given NNL money, one cover, one million, so to favor a particular team, the person should come up, provide the evidences, and, and say, you don't just say it. Look, I appreciate, I appreciate the passion in a lot of us who want to see our clubs win. But let's be fair to NNL on the more serious. Let's be very, very fair. You have an Adesoya who wants to be fair to everybody. You have a, a, a Barista Sajo who wants, who cries every day and calls me, Amma, can you see the publicity in this platform, in this group? Do you hear what this person is saying and what are you doing about it? Do you know sometimes I tell them, say, please, we do not need to reply. We need to absorb these shocks. That is the only way we can get better. I mean, I, I want to really say that people should be fair to NNL. We are not getting everything right. We hope to be better. But I don't think that NNL has has collected money or has is giving the tickets, the four tickets, very important tickets. You know, it's a very competitive league. 46 clubs, you hear me? It is not easy. Only one person will pick it. Last year, we, get, we gave clubs two, two slots, a chance to form a super eight. And then in Enugu, it was like a war. And now it's a bigger war that only one team wins it at once and goes before we play. Perhaps the decider to know who is the champion of NNL at the end of the season. I think we're doing our best, and uh, we deserve a little pat on the back, even though we expect a bigger applause, that uh, it could be better. This is a league running without money. We don't have fund. We don't have a sponsor. I will be crying there in that we need people to put hands on the plow to see how we can make it. We need partnership. We need sponsors. We need people to appreciate what we're doing that because if we don't have a good league running, we can't have our players being invited at the national team. And the national team cannot produce a good player. Where do you get the underage players? At the NNL, at the NLO. This is very important. You cannot have a, a player in the Premier League wanting to co come and play at, at an underage. We have a top goal scorer in NNL. His name is Emmanuel Iweze. He is above the age of 20, but he's a prolific player. And Boso personally told me why he would not invite him, because he's over the age. You know, slightly at 23, 24, and he's looking for an under 20. So we need to encourage the league and see it grow. If we don't plow and invest in NNL, we'll be making a huge mistake in the country. Because we'll be crumbling what we term the most important. See, it is the bridge between. I don't know how anybody wants to look at it, but I'm so passionate about what I'm talking because we know that we need to do the best. NFF need to sit up to support us. The NRA need to also keep talking to their umpires. I told you some of them are fantastic interpreters of the rule, but we have a lot of them who have been huge disappointments. And this is where a lot of people cry foul to say, how would you not award a penalty? Why would you create a penalty where there is no penalty? Why would you not give teams 50-50 chance to I'm play and win down. and let the best team emerge? I'm let the calm. winner... Down. Who has the most skill? Calm down. Win. I know if we I'm let coming you, down. you will go on and on and on and on and on. Calm down. I know you're doing yeah, the PR see, job. See, but you said there are some officials <laughs> who understand the rules. It's just our last question. I will let you go. But is the NNL aware that there's corruption when talking about officiating? There's corruption in the NNL. Is the NNL leadership aware? <clears throat> You see, we have heard a lot about corruption. We are not saying corruption does not exist. But there has not been, there has not been any case of corruption reported. What people say is like a jab. You jab okay. us with the mouth. Okay. If you have an evidence to prove that a team money has exchanged hand between team A and B, or between player this and that, it's a punishable offense. NNL will not take it lying low. Especially when you have an Obi Nogba who, who does not want to tolerate that. You have a barista in our midst who will interpret what punishment you will get if you are caught. And we all know what it says. There have been no evidence of corruption. But we've heard, we will not take that. We've not heard that, ah, this person uh, is trying to do this or they would do this or you suspect. They only suspect it. But we keep telling them, Please, these are the kind of stories we like in NNL. If you, if you have a, a culprit, if you have an evidence to prove that Mr. A has exchanged money with Mr. B because he wants a match to go in his favor, please, with, with the fastest speed of light, come to the secretariat or take your evidence to the NFF if you feel that NNL will not be able to do what to, to apply justice go to the NFF or go to a relevant person you trust and forward the evidence. But Austin, I like this question. So teams should be on their toes to know that you don't need to bribe referees to win a match. You don't need to bribe anybody. Let's develop this game. We will all repeat at the end because these are the things that will attract investors to put their money in NNL. We, we don't encourage yeah. it. It doesn't work. It shouldn't work like that. Everybody should be given mm. a fair chance. Play well and win. 
at least I was happy that Sporting Lagos went to play a match in Ecom. Godwin Enahina confessed since the season it was the best of match he has ever seen and that his team won't lost. And despite that, there was an applause. He had to share a video with me and a, a, a lot of other people. That's the kind of thing we want. Even when you lose, yep. lose fairly and squarely think, and applaud um, the referees. A, For him yeah. to do that, a, that is why I have told you we a, have a lot of good referees in the league. Yeah, yeah Austin. That's a good yeah. place. That's a good place to leave it. Well done. Thank you so much for being with us on the show tonight. We'll continue to monitor and, of course, support uh, whatever you guys are doing at the NNL. Thank you so much, Ama Ignis. Thank you so much. Thank Again, uh, Bolu, Yemi, you guys are great. You guys are doing wonderfully well. Thank you so much. We hope to go into a bigger partnership with um, Channels Television because we know what you guys have done yeah. with your kids' competition and other things you've ventured into. Mm -hmm. Please, let's bring it closer to NNL. You can help us push the league forward. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank you so much, Emma, for being on the show. So that's it, Emma Ignis. It's all about publicity when you talk about the Nigerian National League. That's the second tier football level in the country. Let me quickly go to Bolu. Uh, so we get on with the show. Bolu, Emma said so much. I mean, Emma, if you leave it, it's going to go on for two hours, you know, talking about the NNL. But, but which of these issues worry you, particularly, Bolu, where you think about the development of football at that level? Well, um, one of the most important thing is um, officiating. Why? Because if you see officiating as home team must win all the time from the lower level, that's what you will bring mm -hmm. into the first division. I've heard things about sensitizing fans. Uh, the fans sometimes are not even the problem alone, even the club themselves. And I believe there has to be a rash sanction. For example, if you've had like Kano pillars were sent to you from Kano, sent to Katina, sent to Kaduna, now sent to Abuja, you shouldn't be moving like that. So if you have any issue, and it has to be maybe it was the fans or team that if you remove like 15 points, if you get the if you get relegated because of your own doing, I guess maybe people can learn from you. And it's always impossible or everywhere that referees go cover. I think referees too, there should be sanctions for referees. If there's a clear reason that this is poor officiating, there should be sanctions to maybe a suspension for two matches or two weeks or something because there has to be consequences for everything. Like he rallies, and I think everyone agrees, the NNL is very key. If you come with the mindset of this is how it is run, into the NPFL when you get promoted. You will have that mindset. And those coming with an elite mindset, they come to where it is poorly run, they will also have that poor mind as well. So I, I think there has to be consequences for every wrongdoing. And I think everyone also agrees that our games has to be on. You can watch even the League One in England on TV. We want to see these things. Even if it's not terrestrial, if it's cable TV, if it's online, app or whatever, let us see these things. Some people will not see that beautiful goal from Van Dresa. That goal can compete with any goal anywhere around the world. We need to start seeing these things. Yes, it's a process. Yes, there's no sponsor. But I think some things are just basic. Like I tell people, LMC regulations for MPFL, you must have, I think, 50 to 200 securities. All the times I've seen the MFM game, I'm not sure I've counted more than 20 security officials. And those guys, about 19 of them are staying with the players. My boss will tell me something that if you bring like 20 dogs at every match venue, everybody will calm down. Everybody's scared of dogs. Leave all those, I have a dog in my house. No. When you see a massive dog at a match venue, your blood will calm down. So we need to find ways to make sure our games are beautiful. Like you rightly said, Austin, the stadiums, some of our stadiums are an eyesore. We need good pitches for our players. You can't play on the sand. I want to go to the World Cup. It's not possible. So I believe it's possible if you put our hearts to it. Let's not just keep talking all the time. We need people that are ready to work. And hopefully, we get to sort all these things very soon. That's the hope that we all have. Hopefully we get yeah, hopefully. So the quick update, I mean, from uh, Old Trafford, it has finished Manchester United 1, Chelsea 1. Um, I think with, 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 with what I saw in the last 10 minutes, I think it's a fair result for both sides. They shared the spoils and, um, yeah, we, we, we continue to see how things go um, for, for both teams till the end of the season. I think Man United, Manchester United consider themselves lucky. Uh, Chelsea were a bit wasteful in the early moments uh, of, of the game. And both sides played like there wasn't too much to, to this game. Uh, Chelsea probably sees the FA Cup as more important uh, than, than it looks like they're going to be in the Champions League come what may, uh, unless maybe they lose all uh, their remaining matches. And I, I, don't, I don't see them uh, doing that. And, and for United, I don't know. Picking yourself up in this kind of situation is 
always very difficult. But, but we'll see what happens. We'll see how far uh, it will go for both of uh, the teams. Let's take a quick update from the Europa League uh, as well. And uh, West Ham has taken a hit. It's 2-1, I guess, uh, right about now. Entered Frankfurt currently leading. Yeah, that's the result. Uh, the game between RB Leipzig and Rangers is yet to produce a goal. 81 minutes of football in the game between RB Leipzig and Rangers. But West Ham now, well, you know, if, if because there is no away goal rule, you, you'd say that they still have a chance, even if it ends this way, because all you need to do is to outscore your opponents. Yeah, if it ends like this, if they win just 1 0 in second leg, they can force extra time. So there's advantage for the away goals rule, and there's Disadvantages, even though personally, I think uh, the way goes rule is what makes home and the way interesting. Yeah. Remember, there are now talks that in the next few years they want to scrap out home and the way because there's no reason playing the home and the way when there's no way goes. But let's see for this game, the game is not over, still about 10 minutes to play. West Ham can still pull one back, but we have Nigerians who have gotten on the score sheet elsewhere. We have Ademola Lukman leveling for Leicester City and the Conference League, and uh, Cyril Dessas scoring a brace for Feyenoord against Marseille. I don't know what that boy needs to do again to get to the Super Eagles. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And uh, just like you said, uh, Jose Mourinho doesn't care. As long as there is a title, he's ready to fight for it. Mm -hmm. Conference, league, whatever you Anything. want to call it. Uh, Roma yeah. going on strong. They're taking it with all the seriousness that he deserves. So I won't be surprised. I guess what Brendan Rodgers and uh, Jose Mourinho had worked together mm -hmm. before, so maybe they know uh, each other. We'll see what happens uh, in that one. But guys, let's quickly talk about the women before we get carried away about all the things happening in and around us. The next Nations Cup, the draws uh, will be had very soon. Let's look at uh, the, that's it on your screen, draw holes tomorrow in Morocco. Uh, of course, needless to say, uh, the Moroccans are the host. Now, uh, uh, three positions are predetermined. The host, host country will be in A1, that's Morocco. B1, uh, Cameroon, uh, second best ranked team. The B B1, and of course, uh, the Super Falcons of Nigeria. The champions, they will be in Group C, uh, C1. All right, let's look at Port 1. Incidentally, all the remaining teams are in Port 1. In Port 1. So you have Togo, Uganda, Zambia, Burundi, Senegal, Botswana, Burkina Faso, and Senegal. So these are the teams uh, in Port One, and they're going to be drawn uh, into the, the groups, and uh, we'll take it from there. So years past, I would have said, give me anybody. Uh, but these days, there, there are teams I can't confidently say, like South Africa. I can't confidently say, give me South Africa. First of looking at the teams at this Afcon, uh, Alcon, and I, I looked myself again. I don't know who advised CAF to yeah. do the regional, but it does not make any sense. Two of the top three best, uh, two of the top five best teams in Africa will not be competing that end. Because they have to cancel themselves Because they have to face each other. But um, I think the Falcons, as poor as they may have been, I still believe we, we have the best players here. Uh, uh, some guys said, no, we should lose. I said, no. The reason we will sack our coach if we don't win this tournament is because we all still believe we are the best in Africa. So I, I think that if they can gather themselves together, for example, if former Numano has been scoring well um, in the absence of Sofshola, then imagine what both of them can bring together when it comes to it. So let's see what the draw is. I, I think to an extent, I agree. The last time we played South Africa, I'm not even talking about the Asia World Cup. The last outcome, we struggled in yeah. the two games we played. I think we lost in the group stages, then defeated them via penalties in the final. So uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, we've seen the uh, Falcon struggle against teams um, in the uh, Aisha Bari Cup. We saw them for the qualifiers for the Olympic Games. But again, I still think we are we are the best. We, we, teams have caught up with us, yes, but the Falcons should still, they should still win this year's outcome. No stories. Uh, maybe Thomas, um, Randy Waldron's job is even on the line. If he fails to win this, for whatever, okay, we'll qualify for the World Cup. That, that one is a given. We will qualify for the World Cup. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I think it's only fair we hear Austin stink. <laughs> um, these days, I, I'm a lot calm when I watch ladies <laughs> <laughs> football because a lot of people have caught up with us. Uh, we still have the X Factor squad. I agree with Bolu. But look, we, we cannot beat our chest and say we are heads and shoulders above any, everybody anymore. These guys have really, really caught up with us. Maybe the experience always coming true for us. 
Um, I, 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 I want to agree with Bolu most of the things he talked about. You know, there's just something about having the stats on your on your side, you know, when you're going for a competition as the Super Falcons, they've won the Alcon nine times, nine Yemi, in 1998, 2000, 2002, 2004, 2006, 2010, 2014, 2016, and 2019. We didn't have the competition in 2020 due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, when that sort of a team is coming out for this sort of competition, this, this sort of record, it's your motivation. But I also agree with you that teams are beginning to catch up. Morocco, for instance, they are not just paying attention to women's football. They are putting money. They are investing. That's how to show that you want to catch up. Not just with the national team, with even women's club football in Morocco. And we saw it with the maiden edition of the Women's Super League. But I also like the approach Randy Wardrum has brought to this team. He made them look like they were ordinary. He made them understand that, look, you're still a team that has a lot of work to do. And that's why in every game you could still tell that he's experimenting, he's trying to see which team, which player can play with this, with this player and make yeah. it a, a good teamwork display. He's trying to do everything to make sure that this team, you know, keeps winning. So that's what might just work for the Super Falcon. But with the Africa Women's Cup of Nations, they might team all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, we have just about a few more minutes to end, so let's just see how we can blitz through all that we have. Well, of course, let's take some reactions from yesterday's game in the UEFA Champions League. Uh, it was tough uh, for Liverpool. Forget about the scoreline. They were made to work really, really hard to get that 2-0 victory. Uh, they're very, very happy on it. So they're closing on a place in the final. Let's quickly listen to, of course, Jürgen Klopp, the Liverpool manager, and, of course, Thiago, who seems to be in, in fine form right about now, just coming into form at a very important period for the Reds. Um, the way we defended the RL, the way we attacked with the RL, uh, was key. You have to score goals, it's clear, it's in football, it's the same. I like the first half already, to be honest. Um, it was clear we had to keep going. Um, what I like most about Villarreal is really that they, even when they're under pressure and there's one moment where they can um, get out of the pressure, they're immediately a threat, immediately passes in, in, in the center where with all we had to put a lot of players obviously on the wing to, to try to or in the ball in a situation to win the ball when you don't win the ball there then obviously all of a sudden you are in between everything and we did that most of the time really well so 2-0 half time not more, not less. The full work is to do. There's nothing, nothing happened yet. That's how it is. If it, it's, it's, for me, it's the best example. You play a game and it's 2 near at half time. You have to be completely on alert. You have to be 100% um, in the right mood. You have to play the second half like you play the first half. There's nothing to defend. If you do that, you get immediately all the advantages we might have had before away. Uh, we know we go there and it will be a, a tricky atmosphere for us. Obviously difficult, uh, different to tonight. He plays an outstanding season. Sadio is an outstanding player. I have nothing to do with the Ballon d'Or nomination and all these kind of things. I don't understand it really 100%. Um, he's world class um, and played again a really good game for us, but I have no idea. I, I don't know exactly how you come with that question. Now the season's not even over. But historically, we have to win something to win the Ballon d'Or. I think most of the time, boss like this. If you are not Messi or Ronaldo, you have to win probably the Champions League, which we didn't do yet. So give us a few more weeks, and then we will see. I really enjoyed uh, the team performance. It's for me, is the uh, the best thing because at the end. Uh, we put the, our level, we want to put the level high as possible and we deliver today, for sure. It's not just about patience. At the end, we are trying to f figure out where are the gaps. We tried at the first half as well. We have created a lot of chances, created a lot of opportunities, and just in the second half it came. So we, we create uh, the chances that we want, that we want to create, so uh, we're fine with that.
<laughs> okay. All right, Tiago and Jurgen Klopp. Speaking of Bolu, just a quick one. We hear Jurgen Klopp has signed a two-year extension, so at the very least, it's going to be there till 2026. A lot of fans are even afraid to think of Liverpool without Klopp. But he can't be there forever anyway. Yeah, sure. But what, what a night. I think uh, it could be maybe for he's planning for the next World Cup, not this time for Germany. But if Pep decides to leave next year like he said he will leave, I think you can almost write Liverpool's name on every Premier League title before then. Except um, Eric Ten Hag brings something different to United. Man United. Uh, we don't know what's up with Chelsea yet. Uh, if Arsenal decide to spend money at the end of the season, then Newcastle, if not even if they'll survive relegation, we don't know what their summer will be. We don't know where this is coming. Mm -hmm. But as of now, if Klopp remains and there's no Pep, I think you can almost say they win every Premier League title till he leaves. And uh, we don't know. Maybe after signing Klopp to uh, Pep, might also decide to sign the extension <laughs> with uh, Man City. But for now, I think it's probably the best thing for them. Klopp is like a loyalist kinda. We will see it in his output. That's yeah. why it will get, come out with almost the same lineup every game with the same players that helped him while he was doing the transition. So good one for Liverpool fans. He, he's created a bond between himself, the players, and the fans. So let's see how much success they can record. Um, in the next three years for Liverpool. Okay, all right. So that's it. Uh, that's a good place to uh, leave it. Uh, just when you think you have time on the show, you just get to know that you really don't have time. Well, that's the much we could take on the show today. We really do hope that you've enjoyed it. First, I want to thank Bolu Amoni for his time on the show today. Yeah, it's, always, it's, always, it's always fun having you. Uh, so that's it. That's the much we could take. Like I said, we'll be back here again tomorrow. Take you on a trip across the money spinning world of sport. We, we we hope uh, it was worth your while uh, staying up with us. And, of course, we'll do this again tomorrow. From the city of Lagos right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo saying bye-bye. I was just giving a last look to see if uh, West Ham could do something against Frankfurt, but it seems Frankfurt to run away with that win. In London, I'm Austin Okonakman. In everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. <laughs>